Hello and welcome to this video where I will show you how you set up identity in ASP.NET Core web app with MySQL. As you might already know, identity is a very powerful tool for authentication and authorization on your website and is actually very simple to set up. So let's go and set up identity in ASP.NET Core web app. So now open uh, Visual Studio 2022 and it's important that it's 2022 because it has the .NET 6 framework that we're going to use and you just hit create a new project and in here you will choose the ASP.NET Core web app and hit next and then we will type identity project and we will just yeah it's okay the location and solution name is also okay so we just hit next and we want to use .NET 6 the long-term supported framework and we don't want to use any authentication type because we will scaffold it inside the project and it's okay to let the http be configured but we don't want to use docker so let's just hit create and to scaffold the identity framework into our project we have to go to our project name and right click and then we want to say add and we want to say new scaffolded item so now we are when we inside here we want to say identity and we can hit add so now we'll just take a minute and it will install all the NuGet packages that we need. And I just skipped forward because it took a little bit of time. But in here we want to say override all files. And after that we want to go down to this plus icon to get a new data content class. And it will just create a name for us. So we will just yeah, use that name. And let's say add. And down in the user class, we also just want to use the name that identity is going to give us. So we say add and hit add again. And now this will also take a little while. Okay, so now it's scaffolded, uh, but I actually got an error uh, when I did it first time. Um, and it said that Microsoft.VisualStudio.Web.CodeGeneration.Design that there was something wrong with this file and what it did was to remove it i just hit uninstall this package and then down in the package manager console i actually just installed the earlier version and when that was installed uh, i could then scaffold again and then it worked so if you try to do that then you might get it to work also but as you can see, when it then installed, uh, or when it scaffolded, uh, it actually installed the newer version instead. So I don't really know why this is happening, but it fixed the error. So I hope it will fix it for you also. But now when we are already here in the uh, NuGet package area, I want to go to browse and I want to type MySQL. And then we want to install this Pomelo Entity Framework Core.MySQL. And we just want to install the newest version. Okay, so it just acted weird right there. I don't know why, but it's installed. Uh, as you saw, I had to, to type or to click two times on the install button but uh, i got the the tick so it should be installed now so next we can go and into the program.cs file and as you can see now the identity framework has now set up this code uh, it's our db context and as you can see on my computer it's acting weird also because it cannot find this identity project user but i think if we say show potential fixes yeah then it will say using identity project areas identity and data so that should fix it 
But now, as you can see, it's using uh, the SQL server. And we don't want to use the SQL server. Uh, we want to use the MySQL server. So we say use MySQL. And this is actually taking two parameters. So we're going to set a comma. And I actually got the code here on my phone. So what we want to say is that we want to type new. And we want to say my SQL server version like that. And this is also taking a parameter and that will be new version. And then this is actually taking three new parameters and it's actually the version number of your MySQL server. So in my case, I'm actually using PHP my admin and I will just show you where you find the version number. So now that I'm inside uh, PHP my admin, I actually had the version information right here and it's 4.9.10 in my case. I surely think it would be something else in your case. And if you're using another, what do you call it? A, you know, the place where you watch your MySQL server, uh, you, sh you should be able to find it very easy. So I will just go back to the code and in here I will type 4.9.10. Oh, sorry, not point, it's a comma, because it's three different parameters. And that should actually be it. And I actually just found out that I don't have any free databases to test this on, so I will just uh, install SAMP, so I can make a local database uh, where it also use uh, PHP my admin. So I will just install SAMP. And I will just show you how to do it, because if you don't have a local database and you might wondering where you find it, uh, then you can install it from here. So you go to Sam's uh, website, or actually it's apachefriends.org, uh, but you can just type Sam uh, in Google and then download it to Windows. And we will install this setup wizard. And I just, uh, yeah, it's okay too to take all these on. So let's just say next and next and next. And it's actually just a pretty simple installation. And then it will install. And I'll just fast forward. So now it's installed. And even though I have a very fast PC, it actually took around five minutes to install. Uh, but let's hit finish. And now the control panel should be shown from SAMP. And we want to start up the Apache server and the MySQL server. And just allow access. So now it's pretty easy to come in. It's just uh, to hit the admin on MySQL. And then it will go to your local PHP MyAdmin page. And as you can see now, the server version is actually a different version. So I will just type this into the code. And instead of this, I will type the other thing and just replace it with comma. So now we want to set the connection string because the connection string should not be this. So we can just delete this. And I actually want to go to my block because I have a post where I can just copy and paste how a connection string is looking. So inside my, my web page, I will just search for MySQL and I have the, the article. Um, and then we actually just want to use this. And let's copy and paste it into the code. And now, because I don't really know what the password and user ID is for a newly started uh, SAM server. So I will just find out and I will type it in and show you what it is. So this is gonna be my first try. Uh, the server is called localhost and that makes sense because if we go to the URL you can see we have localhost and the database is called test and that was just because I saw there was a database already called test 
and then we have a user ID of root and there is no password. So I'll try to see if this works. And actually the way we will try to figure out if this is working or not, uh, we will go to the package manager console and just delete what I typed here. And then we want to say add migration and let's just call this init to show that we initialize uh, identity and let's hit enter. So now it actually succeeded and we can see that it made the migration file right here and that it wanna it want to create a table called ASP net roles and it has some columns inside and it will actually create a, a lot of tables because this is identity framework so it already set up everything for us. So next we want to say update database and hit enter and see if this works. And it actually looked like it's done with no errors, but let's try to go to the, the database and update. And as you can see, we actually have all the, the tables. So just at first look, I actually think it looks a little bit funny because it says ASP net roles with a small a and a small n. But that I think maybe it's because of a new update or something, because as you can see in a old solution I have here, it's actually with a big a and a big n and also a big uh, so I don't know why why it's like that, but maybe it depends on what uh, what version of identity you are going to use, or it could also be because of if we go to the front page, you can see this is a Mariah DB uh, server type, and if I go to my other server, uh, it's actually not saying what it is. But as you can see, the server version is way lower uh, than the one we just installed. But the good thing is that it actually worked. Um, if we want to test if uh, we can uh, create a user, uh, as you can see, this is empty. So let's try to go to our project and let's open the project. So now I opened the project and I actually forgot something because right up in the right corner, we would have a login and a register a button that we could hit, but it's not there because we have not included it in our layout file. So we want to close the project again and go to the uh, layout in the shared uh, folder. We want to go to the underscore layout file and let's include the partial. We, we want to include this login partial file. So beside our unordered list, uh, I'll just copy and paste some code I found. Uh, it's called partial. And then we want to say that the name should be the underscore login partial. So if we save this and we open the project, project again, then we have the register and login button. So if we register a user, so if we just type a email, let's just type something and let's say hotmail.com and we need a password that it's strong enough. So identity will, will actually accept it. So we need some signs and let's say hashtag password with a big P maybe. And then one, two, three. And again, hashtag password, one, two, three and we say register. So now normally uh, you will have to have a email server set up so it could send uh, that you have to confirm your your user uh, but it's not set up. Uh, as you can see this app does not currently have a real email sender registered but uh, as you can see normally this would be emailed uh, but then you can just click here click here to confirm your account. And I will not show in this video how you set it up. Maybe in a future video, uh, if I made a video in the future, I will put it up here in the card or in a card. So if there is a card right now, uh, 
then it would I, I will have a video on it but let's click to confirm the account so now you confirmed your email and if we go back to the uh, to the local host uh, PHP my admin uh, let's go into the ASP net users and as you can see we actually have the user by default the uh, the username and email will be the same but you can of course separate this if you want to in the code um, but I think it's okay for now and as you can see our email has been confirmed so it's true now or just a one as it will show here so now if we go back to the project i'll just copy and paste the email because it was some random thing i was writing so copy this and we will try to log in to the page uh, and if i maybe just type something wrong we can try to test it out if it's if it's actually not working uh, so my password i'll just type it correctly and it said it's an invalid login attempt so if i try to log in with the correct credentials it should log us in and as you can see it say hello and then the email but there is just one very important thing i will show you um, when it comes to identity because if you go into our login partial page uh, we will have these classes called sign in manager and user manager and these are actually uh, yeah the fundamental of identity and how to use it and manipulate uh, you know username and email and as you can see here we have this sign in manager where you just say dot is signed in and then the user so when the user is signed in it will show uh, the email of the user to uh, to see that we will just uh, use the user manager class with our identity project user uh, inside and then we will say get username and then just the user but I think this is a good time to stop the video and maybe I will make another video uh, and call it part two uh, with if, uh, for example, if you have a user that want to, uh, you want the user to insert a, a company name uh, with the login and then display it on the site when they are logged in. So, you know, uh, if we go to the the user table again and then it would be an extra column in this table where we want to say company and then the username and just generally go more in depth with identity and uh, yeah show how you use it even better but yeah i hope you learned something from this video and found it useful and if you liked it then please like the video and subscribe to my channel then you will get updated if I maybe make another video uh, for identity and how you get more in depth with it. So have a nice day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.